Yes, family. Uh, everybody excited we're in Zanzibar? Yeah, bro. Three days of relaxation in paradise. A good brother tour guide, can you introduce yourself to our, yes. our group? Yeah. Well, yeah, once again for the camera. My name is Mut, uh, Wahid. <laughs> yes, and uh, our driver's name is Ali. And uh, we're here to welcome you. And I uh, hope you'll enjoy your ride to the hotel. It's about one hour and uh, 15 minutes drive all the way to the north part of the island. And we're here in the west part of the island. Uh, on the way, we will see some interesting things. <coughs> and you'll feel to ask any question you want to know about Zanzibar. But I'll also give you some information about Zanzibar. Yes? Yes. Karibu yes. sana. Karibu sana. I hope some of you speak very friendly Swahili so far. No? no? Asante yeah. sana. You don't know? Yeah. Abari Ghani. Yeah. Come on, I mean, the stuff is in the book. Come on, man. I, 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 I spent a week typing that book up. <laughs> yes. So we have a Swahili page in the book. And, uh, ah, OK. Where are you from, guys? New York City. Uh, ah, okay. All over. All over Africa. All over, yeah. That's right. Welcome. That's welcome back. Welcome. Right. Welcome, welcome back. Uh, Georgia, Jamaica, New yes. York, uh, California, yeah. Michigan. Uh, ah, okay. When you yourself? Yes, I'm originally from uh, Jamaica. Jamaica. And live in Georgia, the great okay. state of Georgia, USA. That's nice. Right. Nice. Nobody like when I say the great state of Georgia. Yes. But I'm original here. 13 colonies. Uh, yes. Yeah. Great don't mean good. Sherman didn't burn um, Savannah. Yeah. 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 So this, this is what I put together in the book. Oh, nice. Uh, I'll give you one of the books. Uh, let's see, I get it from the back. Uh, but, oh, okay. Oh. But, uh, that's our three page of um, you know, mm. key Swahili, but I don't yeah. know if anybody read it, but you can, you know, you can entertain us so we can respond yeah. back and learn. Sure. First of all, you pronounce it correct because it's called key Swahili. While everyone, including Google, <laughs> says Swahili, but it's called Kiswahili. Explain the difference yes. between Kiswahili and Swahili. Yeah, yes, but uh, Kiswahili is how we pronounce our language, right? Right. Yeah, we call it Kiswahili. Yes, and Kiswahili is uh, is the language that is formed uh, by collecting different languages around the world. Uh, this is because of the people who came here in Zanzibar before, and uh, everyone who came here left some some of words for example the first the first people to enter in this island was african yeah us. bantu people that's us yes that's us. yeah that's bantu us. people came to this island and they are the one who give the island's name oh. the original name of this island is called unguja, unguja. not zanzibar ah. and unguja is like unguja. a bantu language which means a small plate with full of food. Oh, that's us. Yeah, it's like yes. ungo ja. Ungo ja. Ungo ja. Yes, ungo is like a plate, and ja means it's full of ah, food inside. Love it. Love so it's like a small island with fresh air, good water, food, fruits, and everything. And then the second group of people who came here was the people from Iran. Yes, they came here because they had a war back in their country, and they're looking for the place to stay and uh, they were expecting that this island will be empty. Ah. But once they landed here, they saw black people on the island already. And they were so surprised. And they say in their language, oh, this is Zengbar. It's like uh, the land of black people. Ah. Yes, Zengbar. Yes. And then the other group of people after these Persian people was Portuguese. Yeah. So the Portuguese were the first uh, European in this island but uh, things didn't go well when Portuguese came here because they were the first to start this left trade you know it uh, and uh, the people you. of uh, oh, yeah right. the people of Zanzibar along with the people from Persia didn't like to go on living with them so we had a war with them so we fought many many years uh, but Portuguese was very strong and at the time when we secretly traveled to Oman to ask for the help and Oman, they were interested to help us with some secret uh, interest. They came here to fight Portuguese, and eventually Portuguese surrendered and they decided to go back to their homeland. And from that time, we became total control under the Oman Empire until 1964. But uh, then Oman, after a few years in their power, they started doing the same thing that Portuguese you know it. used wow. to do. And uh, that's the time when we decided not to trust anybody. That's right. It's 
the time when we decided to do revolution. So we don't ask for help for anyone. Right. We have to do it by ourselves. That's why right. in 1964, our ancestors, they took everything they can take, stones, whatever, like traditional spears or whatever, to fight Oman. And eventually Oman surrendered and they decided to leave the country. And from that time, Zanzibar became under total control of ourselves until today. Yes. But why is called Zanzibar? A part of Zanzibar, uh, the Oman, when they came here, they say, no, we live here, so this is not the only land of black people. It's also for the Arabs. And because of that, they say this is beautiful island. And uh, for their pronunciation, they say Zanzibar. Okay? And then British people came in 1890s. Uh, they came with other interests, but they say because of the slavery, they say they want to stop slave trade. And uh, because of the British pronunciation, they are the one who say Zanzibar. As you know, many countries when the British people mm -hmm. don't know how to pronounce the real name of the place, it became the official name for their mistakes. So they are, they are the one who say Zanzibar. But originally it's Zengibar, or the original name is Unguja, which we, we use it today. Yeah, like when you ask me when I go somewhere, I don't say I'm from Zanzibar. I say I'm from Unguja, because this is the original name of this. And Swahili, why it's called Swahili, our language? It's called Swahili because of these uh, Persian people from Oman. When they came, a part of it get surprised that uh, the people are black, they were also surprised that we had our own language and it was easy language for them to understand. And they say, ah, these black people, they also, they have their own coast language. But with their language, they say, they speak Sahil. It's like Sahil language, the language from the coast, which is now we call it Swahili. But in Swahili, we have uh, Arab, Arabic words, we have Portuguese words, Indian words, English words, and uh, Bantu. Bantu as well, yes. And the people are like mixed, or say cosmopolitan, if I'm not mistaken. For example, Ali, he looked like a little bit Arab, you know, and I am like African. But some people, even here, they say I look like I'm from Rwanda, or I'm from, I'm from whatever, Somalia, whatever they say. But this is how our roots come from different parts of Africa, yes. Yes. Religion in the island is not very uh, strong subject, even though a uh, majority of the people are Muslim. But we are cool Muslim. <laughs> I mean, if you want to practice Islam, it's good. If you don't want to practice Islam, nobody will judge you. So... Is there a percentage? Good. Yes. 95% uh, <laughs> of population of Zanzibar are Muslim and 5% Christian and Hindu, because we still have uh, Indian people lives here. And Indian people in Zanzibar are very cultural to compare with Africans and Arabs. Africans and Arabs, we are very mixed. We get married each other, we do everything together. We speak Swahili, we don't speak like Arabic. They don't speak Arabic. I don't use Bantu, I use Swahili. But Indian people, they don't speak very good Swahili. When they are together by themselves, they speak Indian language. That's why even today, the Indian people in Zanzibar they're still shaking their head when they talk, you know. Yeah, it's like, man, why you shake your head when you talk? No, I don't shake my head when I talk. So yeah, you're still shaking it, you know? Yeah, it's like, yeah, that's... Uh, this is because they don't mix very well with the uh, other people. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so that's... Um, and politically, is also good. We have uh, two presidents. The president of Tanzania and the president of Zanzibar. Because in 1964, when we've got our independence, uh, we decided to keep our country without any union. But uh, we had a very big fear, fear of uh, Oman will come back to revenge because we did revolution. And the population that time was only 300,000 people all over Zanzibar. Now it's 1.6 million people. So we didn't have a lot of military, we didn't have like civilians, so we decided to go to Tanzania mainland. At that time, it was called Tanganyika. Yeah. Yes, to yeah, ask them that they can provide security to us. And the president of Tanganyika at that time, he was very good president because he was the one who thinking a lot about union, united. 
some African countries. I, I don't want that to bust anybody in the head. Um, it's like it's about to slide uh, down. Yeah, it's it's good. Good. Yeah. 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 So when we ask him uh, if he can provide uh, security in Zanzibar, he said, yeah, we can even unite. Yes. And uh, that was the idea when Tanzania came, uh, was born, because uh, it was a big question how we will name our new country after the Union. So there is a guy, he was not in the government because it was like uh, the presidents give like a quiz or like something like a gift to the people who will provide new name. So one guy he say, why don't we take the first letter from the word Tanganyika, Tan, and the first three letters from the word Zanzibar, Zan, and then we combine Tan, Zan. And some people, they say, mm, yeah, but it doesn't sound like a country, Tan, Zan. And another guy, he say, yeah, but most of the countries around the world, they have ear sounded N, Namibia, Somalia, Australia, whatever. So they say, Tan, Zan, Nia. And that's how it became Tanzania. Yes. Excellent, excellent. Yes, yes. The population in Zanzibar now is 1.5 million people. In Tanzania, they are about 60 million, probably. Yes. We are like brothers and sisters. Yes, yeah. We travel to Tanzania without any passport. We can work there, they can work here. We don't see difference, but we know the difference, like accent, dialects, and, uh, but we look, we look the same. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, we look the same. Yes, we look the same. We had a rain a few weeks ago, and our infrastructure is not very strong enough to uh, sustain the rain. So there is some path holes on the street. Uh, sometimes when the government failed to fix this path hole, we plant banana tree in the middle of the road. Banana, guava, to show the government that you have to fix this road. <laughs> All right. wow, if you so can not do that, we wow. can make it green, you know. All right. uh, so don't be surprised when you see banana tree in the middle of the road. Please show that to us, because I... Yeah, yeah, yes. Question. Now, when that happens, how effective it is? Would they move on it and then repair, or it takes a little time? How effective is that? Uh, yeah, it takes a little, a little bit of time, but they, they fix it. Okay, what do, you, what do you consider a little bit of time? About how many months, or estimation? Uh, maybe... Six months. Oh, that's, that's a little bit of time. Yeah, yeah. Well, six still, months. You know, some don't do it at all. Sometimes right. they don't fix it at all. Yeah, see, uh, like amazing. people, some good people on the street. Oh, going through it. Yeah, going, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They go, they put some. Stuff, yeah. Yes. So the people yes. will do something suddenly. Yeah. Wait but for um, when we are very close to the election, oh, there's a lot that. of uh, <laughs> <laughs> repairing, you oh, know. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> I have another question. Yes. Uh, what is the literacy rate? When it comes to education, yes, you know, female, male, male overall, the children. You know, yeah, we we have a very good uh, uh, education system in the country uh, so far uh, because uh, education, like going to school for ten years as a basic education, is mandatory, okay. and a parent can go to jail. They're all right. If they keep their children at home. in the uh, at home, right. uh, yeah, well, it then. doesn't matter, woman, women, no, girls, boys, she's right. able, you know. So, they, so they don't want you to. They don't want you to use your child as labor. They no, want you to cool. get your child yeah. educated. That's right. but, but that's what some people do, right? They have their children working ah. instead of sending them to school. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they smaller, you have to send their children to school. Good. They can help you, like children. They can help uh, family business, like after school. Ah, uh, thank you. Yes, like mm -hmm. going to sell something to support the family, but they have to go to school, Good. and it's free of charge. All right. No distribution at all. Like they don't pay anything. That's why it's like why you don't send your children to school because you don't pay anything no, good. Yes, yes but just for the basic education and this is because after revolution we had a lot of people that don't know even to write their names and the president that time he invested in education and now investment is very very good we built a lot of schools and uh, yeah we are a little bit mind open people somehow because of this education we have universities yes Yes. So with the university, the, um, the public university or the private university? Both. Yeah, yeah, okay, so yeah. how does that work? If somebody goes to grade 10, yes. and then after that they want to go on to yeah. university, yes. now is it like uh, like a small figure or you know, small yes. figure? Uh, uh, there is a, the government uh, gives scholarship to the children that uh, have some grade of uh, yes, but for those who didn't get that grade, they still have the chance to go to university, but they have to pay. Okay. Yes. But is it like a you know like a yeah. kind of small amount? Yeah. Yes. You don't pay like full amount. 
you it's like uh, you pay some percentage yes. until you finish even if you finish studying you didn't finish the payment you can finish when you get job oh, okay and also do they have a uh, yeah what I was gonna say, like technical colleges you yes. learn to trade and stuff exactly and have a high school and yeah. to trade in high school too yeah we so have high school saying. but a high school is optional okay but if you yeah. go and you're going to take a trade say you know sewing yeah or something like that you can yes Yes. Yes. Yeah, like vocational, vocational training yeah, center. Yes. 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 So education is is very important in my country, and uh, girls, uh, they are the most educated people in in this island. How? Oh, yeah. Say that. What the because that's uh, the final. Yeah. First, we have a lot of uh, like <laughs> women are majority in this that's country. Right. Oh wow. That's why uh, polygamism is working well. <laughs> Yes. Uh -oh. I mean, uh -oh. yeah. For the man or for the woman? Uh, for the man. <laughs> always. That's right, because a woman may want two husbands. No, no, no. she's thinking women. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. It's the country. No, it's just one or two countries where they have it, where they can do it. Not, yeah. not most countries. Not the reason is we have, uh, yeah, we have more women <laughs> and men. Some can't handle one, so I don't know what it is. Yes, but maximum is yeah. four. Four. Maximum well, is four. Yeah, you cannot have more. I thought it was up to five. That's too much responsibility. Mm -hmm. I thought yes. it was up to five. Um, uh, uh, no, in, in Tanzania they have a tribe called Maasai. Oh, we know, yeah. yeah, these people they can have I think more oh, than five. one four. Yeah, but in Zanzibar we are somehow based in Islamic uh, culture, in Sunni sect. That uh, maximum yeah. is four for wives. Yes, but uh, now it's changing because uh, our like previous generation, like our grandparents, most of them they had four wives. Yeah. Uh, our father's generation, most of them they had two. And my, my and younger generation, most of us we have one, or even just girlfriend, which is in Zanzibar still not very good to have just girlfriend without married because you cannot introduce your girlfriend to your parents. Until you are married. ready, you want to marry. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. 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 That's so it's like, like that. if you go to your party, I have a girlfriend. That means I'm ready to get married. Oh, right. Yes. Otherwise, I don't have to introduce. That's right. Oh. Yes. So shaking up. Is yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we get married when we are very, very young. Uh, for the boys, we get married from 18 years old to 25 maximum. And for the girls, uh, 18 to 22. Maximum. But it happened like 30, more than 30, 35. So, yeah, it's time question, does yes. anybody get married in their 30s or 40s? Yes. Well, yeah. Right. yeah. Some, some they they get married sometimes, yeah. Some were married before. Yeah. Like my parents, my mom, she's, she, she's very religious and she was pushing me when I was 18 years old. I have to get married. And I said, Mom, you're very religious. And the Prophet Muhammad, the founder of Islam, when he get married for the first time, he was 25. Oh. I'm still 18. <laughs> Yeah. 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 yeah, and there's no divorce. Ah, uh, we have. Yeah, even though the divorce, divorce rate is low, but it's easy. I mean, it's easy because when you decide, you just say it. That's it. Okay, so question: When they go ahead and have a divorce now, uh, what's the chances of the wife being able to marry again? Yeah, when good question. When they have like a divorce paper it, for the community it's a little bit shame mm -hmm. for the right. woman to get divorced it doesn't matter if the husband was a bad guy right. she still supposed but like when somebody goes like oh this woman is divorced uh, she, she, she must be some problem like yeah. <laughs> wow yeah, reason, that's yeah, unfair man. The that's unfair, unfair. Yeah, right. yeah the reason why i was saying that too because when I was saying, sometimes you know i went, I went to bali indonesia yeah. right so a part of it one of the cities lump up and mm -hmm. lumbuck is mostly islam mm -hmm. so i see to me i noticed like even with islam and stuff even though certain things you know go on under you know islam yes different cultures and stuff have their ways of doing things. So when that happens and they divorce and stuff then, the woman can marry again and they say it's a problem and both sides. She can marry again. So they've had like five and six yeah. people where the woman is married five or six times. Yeah. And she's Muslim. When they were yeah. telling me that yeah. I said yeah. I said, Oh yeah. Okay, that was that was yeah. it's surprising. Yeah. It's rarely but it's surprising yeah. depending yeah. on the culture and stuff in yeah. the country. Yeah. She can get married. Like, yeah. like my mom. My mom she was married like three times. Oh. Yeah, three times. My father uh, he was uh, like he had two wives at the same time when I was young and I tried to ask him, I said, Dad, uh, is everything okay? He was like, no, 
It's not a cat. Oh, wow. <laughs> See? I was like, Dad, we do things like you do. So I'm your son and I want to do the same things that you did. And he was like, no, you don't have to do that. I was like, what? You decided then to have two wives? Yeah, because I was stupid enough to do that. <laughs> yeah, so, and uh, we are like 12 children. Six in my stepmom and six in my mom. And uh, I remember when I was a student, uh, every time when I asked my mom, my father, like, I want some money for school fee, like for buying some stationery or to use a public bus. He's very angry, you know. It's like, you are 12 of you, and every day you ask me for this man. I'm like, man, I didn't choose you to be my father. <laughs> wow. of you if I have that. the chance to do that, I will choose, I don't know, uh, <laughs> Aliko Dangote, wow. or I don't know, Bill Gates or someone. Wow. Like, uh, you didn't tell your father that, but you know you would get that. No, no, no. If, I, if I say that, I will be dead. I know, that's what yeah. I said. I know, that's why I always do it. It's a crime to that's, talk back to yeah, your father. That's how I just wonder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same thing yeah. without going yeah. 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 But you yeah. know what, yeah. the other thing is, along with that, you say with the 12 siblings, yeah. how did you all overall get together? Because you have this, you know, separate, you know, the mother and yeah, father. How did you get along? We get along very well. But that's good, because in a lot of cases, the different wives don't get along. Yeah. And then, with the children and stuff, as hell, Problems too with that, so it could cause Us, we, we get along very well, but our mothers don't get oh, well. Yeah, no, I know. Like, but every time my mom sometimes asks, Where are you coming from? I say, I'm from my stepmom. What are you doing there? <laughs> yeah, my mom, she's my mom also. But I mean, your mom is the first wife, yeah. Now, it's privileges with that normally because some cases, you know. The first life, but the first wife, you know, she's the one that can, you know, in charge or whatever. Yeah. And then the other times, you know, and she's the only is the one that decide it was going to be a second wife, yeah. or a third wife. Exactly. And then at times, if she may say, you know, no, but mm -hmm. depending on the husband, yeah. he'll go and get her. Yeah. Otherwise, anyway. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Yeah. But now women also they don't really like it. Um, I mean, I try to ask my my sister sometimes, like, like what what happened if your husband married second wife and her reaction is is crazy you know? it's like, so my father like, lost his teeth like on, on on the fight with my mom due to this because uh, you know when you are polygamy <laughs> when you have more than one wife you have to make like a schedule two days in first wife Right. The next two days uh -huh. for the second wife, <laughs> and my father he made a mistake. He stayed like three days uh -huh. on the other oh, wife, right. oh. and my mom was like, "I'm waiting your ass right here." Right. 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 You know, I'll stay single. <laughs> when my father like came home and they start fighting, yes. and my mom, you know, she threw uh, like a hot pot. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Your mother's a rebel. Yeah. And my father was a little bit slow to. <laughs> To right, lean, you know, right. and it hit on his face, yeah, yeah. and one tooth goes off. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. and my mom was like, "Yeah, I'm happy for that. I'm happy for that." That first wife. Yeah, yeah. So I asked my sisters, like, oh, what, what, "What happened if your husband uh, married the second wife?" And my sister was like, "You know, our father lost his teeth. I think my husband will lose something else. That he will never have another wife." <laughs> Because that's the thing that makes him to marry the second wife. Right, right. I'll chop it off and cook it. Whoa! Whoa! Wow! She threw it out in the dirt. I was even scared myself. I was like, yes. She's a rebel, all right. Where's my mama? is a rebel. Even my my my, my ex-wife. Uh, I I was married. So you didn't get it right too. And uh, my ex-wife was Christian, and she decided to convert to Islam. And uh, I was very happy because she was she just, it was her wish, like, yeah, I want to be Muslim. And I was like, okay, good. But she said, like, Mudrik, I want to be Muslim. I'll pray five times. I will fast. I will do every Muslim's women supposed to do. But if you marry the second wife, I'll kill you and go home. I don't like that she would say, I will kill you and I will kill myself. But she said, I will kill you and I go home. I was like, Okay. I mean, these yeah. rebel women. Yeah. <laughs> She's a rebel. Yes. So women now, they are not very happy with this. Even men, due to a lot of responsibilities. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the cost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The cost, that's right. Back in the old days, yeah, that's yeah. one thing. Because yes. it's all the land, you need people to farm, and yeah. work and stuff. And yeah. now this is a new day. Yeah, now, now it's crazy. Four wives, four houses, four electric bills. Yeah. 
Yeah, for mother in law. For, yeah. Yes, so it's just like that. Right now, we are passing through the place called Bugobo. And uh, this area, it has a different names, but Bugobo is the most popular name in this area because back in colonization, we had a train, like a railway here, in this road that we are using right now. And the train was moving from this area to Stone Town, just 10 kilometers. And uh, because this train, when it's moving, it makes some sound like boo, 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 And the people decided to change the name of this area. Whatever the name is, now they call it boo, boo, boo. Now we don't have any train, because it was very expensive to maintain. So the government decided, after revolution, we decided to make it. 